Hi, Jason. Good to see you again. Hey, Tarun. You too. Thank you for making the time. Of course. Happy to. So you recently finished the Adios program. Could you take us through how your experience was? Uh, perhaps start with a little bit of an introduction of yours, personal, professional, sure. and then how was it before you started the program? What did you have something specific in mind? And then uh, how did it progress? Great. Um, so yeah, I'm Jason Widdup. I am a B2B marketing advisor and consultant. Um, most recently was head of marketing at a small high growth startup called Metadata. Um, and yeah, I've spent most of my career in B2B marketing and B2B technology. So um, I think we got introduced, you and I got introduced over a webinar, I believe. Um, yeah, I was doing a webinar. I can't remember what the topic was, but I think you were, you must have been in attendance and <clears throat> I don't even know why, but <clears throat> you were in attendance and I think you reached out to me afterwards, I believe, and just introduced yourself. And I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I responded to it. You know, I, I like it, uh, <clears throat> it resonated with me in some way. And so I remember we met, we met, we talked about the program and I was intrigued. And so, um, and the reason why, <clears throat> why I was intrigued at the time was it was, <clears throat> you caught me at the right point. <laughs> you definitely got me at a good point because I was really struggling with figuring out my career path forward. And it was really struggling to figure out, I really wanted to make the decision, do I wanna stay or do I wanna leave my current role before I started to look for other opportunities? Um, because in my past, I'd always found the new opportunity before I really made the, the decision if I should leave or not. And that clouded my decision. And I really wanted to be pure because I'd put so much of my time effort, heart, and soul into that last role. Um, it was just not an easy decision. And I was struggling with it. I didn't know how to think about it. And my, you know, I, and I've been, I guess, classically trained through counseling and meditation, kind of the stuff that most of us usually do when we're coming into these kinds of issues. Um, and that just wasn't fully working for me. Um, especially to get to this specific answer. And so um, when I looked into the Audios program after you and I discussed or after we, after we had a chat, I was just thinking, oh, this is different. And it seems like something that makes sense because for me, when you think about meditation, for example, you think about clearing your mind. And so like you're trying to sit and if something comes in your mind, you're trying to just let it go right through. And you're just really trying to clear your mind and that's soothing in some way. And it, you know, there's, it, it's helpful, but it doesn't help you get to an answer is what I found out. And that's what I really needed is I needed help getting to the answer. And how do I structure the problem? How do I think about it? And that's what Adios gave me was a lot of that structure. Here's some different, here's a different way to think about it. Here's like, tactically how to do it you know so very some instructions you know 20 minutes start with 20 minutes a day here's how you do it walk don't walk you know and we went through all those and then meeting with you on a consistent basis and talking through things and yeah i just kind of really dove in um and put the time and effort in change things it was just you know there was a little bit of a struggle some new things to learn uh you and i talked a lot about um, I think one of the first struggles I had was contemplation while walking, just, you know, walking and thinking at the same time. Um, so working on simple things like that and yeah, ultimately it led me to my answer and you know, the answer, cause I introduced myself as a, as a consultant and advisor and not as an employee of metadata. But, um, so yeah, I, I, I did, I was able to make the decision that it was right for me to leave. Um, and then also used the program to help me figure out what I was going to do next. Right. So as you went through the journey, how were the first couple of weeks? And do you remember any specific moments where something started to shift? Anything? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I would say the first couple of weeks, some of the first principles are really easy to understand and you can apply them to almost like to, it's very easy to apply them to problems. And so I think from that standpoint, going through the principles was felt pretty natural. It was like, okay, I get to read about these, learn about their, you know, learn about them and then write things down. Um, so it felt a little bit like journaling a little bit, which I was kind of used to, um, but in a guided way. So not just like an open-ended way. And, um, you know, it, it, at first it was like, hey, it was only 20 minutes. And I thought, oh, no problem. But sometimes I was so busy. It was, it was a little bit of a struggle to find the time. Um, but I made the commitment. Um, but it did take about a week, 10 days to kind of really get into the flow. Um, and I do remember just going through the first couple of principles and just writing things down and uh, that new things started to come to me that hadn't just popped in when I would just think about it or try in different ways. And so I was able to see things within the first two weeks, see things a little bit differently. Um, and I really focused on just kind of staying with those principles and thinking about it from just that standpoint. And so doing it that way as well, um, it's not like you're trying to think about the whole problem. You're taking a slice of it really. And you're thinking about it in one way or with one, like one set of contexts. Uh, and then you switch that in the following week. And so, um, yeah, then it just be, started to become more of a habit after that. And did you use the audioscope uh, for a few situations? And was it useful in terms of the structure it provides to to, to make a decision? Yeah, for sure. Um, use the audio scope. Uh, that's what gives it the structure. And so it was nice to just have, all right, think about it from this, learn about the principle, then here's how to think about it. And every principle has several ways to think about it, really, or you're answering several structured questions. And so, um, again, that makes it very easy to dissect a problem down to its more component parts, and then you're analyzing it from different perspectives. Um, and you're really, and also one of the things that I liked about it is it's not set up to where you have to go through all of the principles before you get the answer. You're start, just starting to go through it and thinking of it in different ways. And if the answer comes to you after the first principle, great. Two or three, you know, cool. It's just helping you kind of serialize through these different ways of thinking about it. And, and ideally you get to an answer by the end, but you can also get to an answer before the end too. And you did get to, uh, get to the answer when so, somewhere midway, or I don't remember. It was close to the end. Yeah. I mean, I, it started to solidify kind of halfway through, I would say, but it really started to become more clear towards the end. Um, and I would just revisit some of the, earlier principles too. And what I wrote down, um, I might refine it even at, you know, at that point, um, or maybe my thinking changed a little bit in three weeks or four weeks, and then I would update it. Right. Um, but yeah, it helped me get there. Because I do remember you telling me somewhere in the middle, maybe it was week five, week six, I don't remember where you took that flight. And you said that, okay, now I've decided I'm going to quit and I'm going to meet them so yeah I, somewhere maybe the second half of the programs at some point yeah yeah okay how do you see this helping leaders especially in companies or education institutions how can this help yeah um and it did help me from a leadership perspective too so in that role you know i had eight or nine people reporting to me, fairly small team, but still um, it helped me think about things differently from their perspective too. Or, and I didn't just contemplate on one problem throughout the program. I added additional ones and um, most were about myself, but some were about other others as well. And it, even like some stuff in my own personal life too, and just kind of trying to um, explore it from that perspective. But from a leadership perspective, especially in high growth startups and just almost any B2B SaaS company that's not a lifestyle brand, there's just 
a lot of moving parts. And what seems to be rewarded in these environments is this kind of hustle culture of, hey, I worked 14 hours yesterday, or, you know, I, I'm not sleeping very well, because look at me, I'm working so much. And um, that is not healthy for humans, really, to, to work that way or to think that way. And so from a leadership perspective, it can, in my experience, if you are more intentional, you slow down a little bit, you really slow down to speed up. But everybody's so restless and everybody's just going in a million different directions because that's what everybody else around them is doing. And so that's what they think is they're supposed to do. And that's kind of how we train people from, you know, when they first enter the workforce, again, especially in technology companies. And so I think the Audios program can really help leaders give an example to their employees of what it should be like to live a healthy work life. I don't know if balance is the right word, but just to how to live a healthy work life, really. Um, and how to not be how to not participate in this kind of toxic culture around hustle and restlessness and just always going and always being anxious. Um, and when as a leader, you get to that point, you're making much better decisions. You're not making decisions out of fear or anxiety anymore, which are some of the worst decisions that you can make. And then that cascades down to your team. And so then they start making better decisions. They, they're all looking for examples of leadership. And if you can give them the example of calm, cool, collected leadership, um, where you're thinking about problems in the right way, and you're making the right decisions, not taking forever to make them, um, but you're also not burning people out. You're not burning yourself out. Um, that's just a really healthy thing for a leader to be able to do. So the fear that uh, I've heard from many people, which you also brought up, is you're going fast all the time. And if I pause for contemplation, deep thinking, is it actually bad for business? Uh, is it going to reduce my productivity? Is, is it basically going to reduce my valuation? Let's just uh, be explicit about it. Yeah. I think it's going to improve it. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you're just running like the standard mm -hmm. high growth startup, you're doing a lot of activities, but you're not taking the time to to think about is are they the right activities you're not taking time afterwards to look at them and analyze and understand did that work or not you're just bouncing from one thing to the other and also your mind doesn't get a lot of sad you just don't get a lot of satisfaction for yourself doing it that way either nobody really likes to context switch you know seven times a day and go to meeting go to 11 meetings in a day and you know just be moving constantly it stifles creativity, it makes people depressed and anxious, just that environment alone. And so, um, so no, it definitely, it, I wouldn't, I would never think of it as slowing a business down or causing an obstacle to growth. I would only think of it as really opening up opportunity, more opportunities for growth and for speed by taking the right time to think about things in the right way and make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Any final thoughts from your side? Uh, something that uh, you didn't cover? No, it's just been, I think, one of the principles that I'm still working on is um, speaking more slowly. And it's such an interesting principle that, and, and the reason why, and I remember, and I have not nailed this yet, and something I'm still working on. I've, I never really thought about how fast I spoke, but I actually saw data about it at the, la you know, tools like Gong and the ones that record calls can give you this kind of insight. And I think at Metadata, I was the second or third fastest talker. I see. And I, that was not, I, I did not like that. You know, I, I was like, I didn't think that was the case. I knew I talked, I spoke quickly, but I never would have thought it was 
in the range of, you know, like the top <laughs> two or three, I figured the sales reps would be way faster or, um, and I really tried it for a while and I really could see the benefits. It was really, cause you wanted me to reduce my, both the, the velocity and the amount of speech by like 50%, I think, or even maybe like 70%. And that was very difficult for me, but I could see when I really tried it, I could see the benefits. Um, what I said was more meaningful. I didn't just fill up the room with, you know, a, like a quiet room with non, you know, just like things that didn't matter. Uh, and I could, and I, I could, feel myself thinking about things as it moved through my brain and came out of my mouth. Um, but just, you know, when you talk a certain way for 47 years, <laughs> it really gets locked in and it's very hard. And it, you, you feel like you sound like you're drunk because you you're, you're slowing down so much and you're like, do people around me think I'm wasted right now? <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> and nobody did but um and some people noticed it some people did notice it and they didn't know exactly how to phrase it they didn't it didn't come to them as like you're slowing down it was just like are you thinking about things more so yeah so that was just one interesting thing that i think has some interesting benefits that i just fully haven't fully realized yet i'm going to keep trying yeah, we'll work on that because I think what you got out was that decision which was on your mind, which was, because that was a top priority. Uh, we'll continue to work on this in the, in the next few months or so. Okay, before we close, do you want to talk about your very interesting mountain climbing project that you did recently? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I took about, uh, I've always been a outdoors kind of a person and I picked up hiking more seriously like three four years ago and just kept progressing and wanting to do longer and steeper hikes and finally got a wild hare to climb mount rainier which is you know the highest peak in washington and one of the higher ones in the states um and i train i just really locked in and i trained for about six to eight months uh in the best shape of my life uh had a couple setbacks on the day that I climbed and unfortunately I didn't make it but got really close and uh signed up again for next year already so I'll be oh, sticking with it until I complete that goal very interesting thank you so much Jason thank you for your time yeah thanks Tarun appreciate it and I'll see you next month we'll meet in person sounds great looking forward to it thanks bye